Yeah, I'll be there on the size, Graham. Dab? Yeah, but at least it's something. Dab and white in, but well under size. We'll crack on. That's a risk of using uh, small looks, I suppose, and small baits trying it to. It is, yeah. Trying but to you've scratch got to do out. that in a match, unfortunately. <laughs> you can't fish small. That's too big. Hi Graham, I've invited you down to Eastbourne today because we seem to have had a resurgence of place fishing. Um, many years ago we used to travel to Hampshire, Palin Island, fish a couple of big matches down there, fortunate enough to win a big one with a massive four pound, I think it's four pound eight place. Um, but we didn't get nothing like that here, we got a few, but all of a sudden uh, it's come alive in Eastbourne and we're getting a lot of place and that's why I called you down today. Um, my brother-in-law Norman had one yesterday of just under two pound. They look enormous because they're spent. They look very big. They look, it looked about four pound when he brought it in the shop. But it just weighed uh, about one pound fifteen. But they're nice fish, and uh, he caught six others yesterday on the beach. Whereas we've had tough times over the years on the beach for place. I think what happened a couple of years ago, about three years ago, they moved in by the tower out six mile off Eastbourne and they were left of the tower on a spot called the Duchess and people caught lots of these place drifting all of a sudden and, and there's carpets of them, you know, there's plenty there and I think maybe that they've settled there and they're after this pea mussel, that's what they feed on and I think they've settled there and obviously certain times of year they're moving into the shore but phenomenal flat fishing, I've never known anything like it I've been here, you know, as you know, I've been at the shop for 40 years and I've just astounded by it you know we're down at white horses today which is a popular mark in Pevensey Bay um, it's quite it's not too rocky it's nice and there's stones and then you've got a nice bit of sand mixed ground really you don't lose gear and um, I mean this over 50s match we get we, we start uh, Mike Perfect from Worthing one of our team he started it up a few years ago and it's slowly grown and we now get 24 25 anglers in the match and it's really nice because all us lot over 50 you can all have a day off because we're pensioners. Or filming. <laughs> Basically, yeah, <laughs> or filming. But um, it's nice we come there. It's quite a laid back match. You'll put a tenner in. They share all the money out. And we've had some lovely fishing here. And uh, it's tense. We run it all the way, different places, Langley Point, here, down at, in the bay. But this seems to be the better venue which each, everybody likes. You don't lose no gear. And, and it throws up some lovely fish. The long casting can pay off here, but also you can find you catch a lot of fish at the stone's foot, which is probably about 60, 70 yards out. And, and there's a gully about 80 yards out here. And basically, sometimes you can go over the fish. The last three matches have been one in closer, where people, and the, the good cast has been going straight over the top of them, you know. But in another day, when you've got a good bit of tide pulling, you'll catch more fish at distance, at range. So it's very mixed. They tend to feed these place on the long tides and it's a massive tide today, a spring tide, it's eight metres. And later on, after high tide here, that will start to run back towards Beachy Head and it will run hard and that's when you'll probably get a decent fish caught, you know. Just designed, well, not completely myself, but almost uh, a new rod with um, one of the companies. It's a Gravity HT and uh, they had a Gravity X out, which is a nice rod, I had a couple. But what I found is in the tide, the tip was a little bit soft, especially if you go places like Dungeon S. So I designed this heavier tip, which HT stands for, and it sits in the rod rest beautifully, as you've seen before when you're filming it. You see all your bites. It's a much more receptive rod, I think, than the, the, one, uh, the other one. But the other one's got a soft spliced in tip, the Gravity X. Lovely, but there comes times when it runs out of air when there's a lot of tide. It just pulls and, and over and see, folds over. Fantastic for yeah. ling fishing, small, you know, short range. Basically, not a lot of tide fishing. But once you get a little bit of tide there, you want something a little bit more substantial. And I've found the blue uh, HT fits that fits that perfectly. You know, uh, there's two models in the rod. There's 15 foot four and 14 foot four. My preference is the 15 foot four. 
just a little bit longer makes everything a bit, a bit easier, I think. Especially casting, goes a little bit further, I reckon. It's fantastic with a fixed ball, fantastic rod. I, I've slogged away this year and I've won the Nomads Championship, which is a great feat for me. Um, they're all good anglers in it and I've managed to win the, win the championship. But what happened two months before the last four or five matches, I was getting a little bit worse and worse as I'm 61 now, worse with the multiplier and I was struggling, especially in the wind. And, and I thought, well, if I change now to a fixed ball, I'm going to maybe blow it, you know. So what I've done, I carried on to the end of the year with a, with a multiplier, managed to win the championship, immediately January come off, switched to the fixed ball. And I haven't stopped, I've done so well with the fixed ball, I'm, so, I'm shocked myself. It's, it's easy, it's simple. I seem to I use um, nano line or, or fire line, very fine lines. You see all your bites. The line I'm using is um, nano line. It's 0.25. It's very, um, very thin and uh, it's quite strong. And I think the fire line I use got the edge. It's a little bit stronger, but this nano line, it, it, it's so smooth. As When you cast, it just goes out and you don't even hear it going out. It's almost a cross between braid and nylon. It's strange stuff, it's like cotton. <laughs> but uh, it, it's fantastically receptive, you know, you get great bites. And what I like about this fixed ball fishing is you see everything. Many a time I'm fishing with um, nylon and you you chuck out, you've got a lot of tide, you might have three little whiting on there and you don't know. Whereas you seem to see, you could see a crab walk over this stuff and you see everything. And the great thing is after you've had three or four bites, you work it out, I'm going to reel it in. Sometimes you'll be fishing with nylon, you won't even hear, you won't even see anything. And you reel in and you've got three fish. Because of the, the, the stretch on it, there's, just, there's, there's no stretch on this nano line, there's no stretch on braid. But the stretch on the nylon, loads of times you don't see half your bites. Um, because, uh, you know, you've got very fine rings and very small rings on the rod, you need a a tapered leader really. A lot of the lads, some of the lads are using normal, but I find it, it, it ties such a beautiful little knot that when it goes out, it just goes out and there's no clunk, there's nothing. Um, a couple of my mates, my mate Gerald, he, he doesn't, he uses um, straight leader, but everyone to their own, but I kind of like the, the tapered leader. But you must be careful when you reel in, because it comes in, it's a long leader, and what happens, it'll come in with a bit of weed on it, of course, it slows you down in match fish. You've got to look as that comes through. Just make sure you get the weed off before it comes through. A jam because it, it'll, it'll go onto the spool, and then you might get what we call a wind knot, or, which is treacherous, you know. I don't seem to get many touch wood, but people do. Yeah, what I've found, Graham, if you use fire line or braid or something like that, I, all us match anglers, we use 10 pounds. It's extremely fine. But um, it breaks at about 18, which is marvellous. But the thing is, if you're fishing in general and you're a pleasure angler, I've bought a load of 14 in the shop and I think 14's favourite. For an average guy, you don't want no hassle, you don't want to be losing leads. So you're going to be talking about a distance of, between a normal guy, it makes no difference. In a match angler, you might get 10 yards, which makes all the big difference. So basically, I think 14 now is generally what I sell in the shop. And just a little bit, and as I say, these knots, you've got to get these knots right. It's very important to get these knots on the tapered leader. Right, this is my flatfish rig, gun place rig. Um, nothing spectacular, because we're on the beach, you don't want... You can put all these beads on and everything, but you don't, you don't need to be too elaborate. You just need to get out a long way, basically. Um, here's an impact lead. That's a luminous one. That's some of their new ones. Quite smart. I can't tell you whether they work better or not. Does luminous attract fish? I don't know. I tend, I tend to be a great lover of red myself. I like using red top uh, weights. But everyone to their own, you know? Um, the way this works is to get your distance, this will, this bottom one will clip onto your weight on the bottom there. I don't know if you can see that, all right. That will clip on there with your bait. Your second one will clip onto a cascade swivel, if I can try and show you without. And it doesn't go through any of the holes, just straight on the cascade swivel like that. That's number two, okay? And the third one, we've got a spring on. 
just to take the pressure of the of the cast. And the same thing, you pull the spring down, makes it easier to, to attach. There's the cascade again, just on there, can you see that? And basically that's really streamlined now. I don't know if you can get a picture of the whole rig. And what happens, it flies through the air, it goes a long way. The pressure of the water will pull it, push this off. Now you might not get this, but as it pushes it up and goes into the water, that will catapult that hook off of there, off the edge. And they'll all come off, and they never tangle. And they'll all come off perfectly. There's three different snood lengths on here. I'll count this bottom one as my number one favourite. I always put my best bait on the bottom hook. Now, whether it catches more, I don't know. I think it does. But then again, it's the first one they come to, isn't it? So it's logical, really. But I do love my bottom hook, big time. Um, it's, so I'll make that one slightly longer, a little bit more flow. The second one, slightly shorter and the third one shorter still again personal preference i just think it's all neat and tidy it's quite streamlined i do have my rigs a bit shorter than other people because i tend to try and grab every i'm not the greatest caster in the world so i try and grab every inch that i can and get it a little bit further than the normal so every little bit gives me another couple of yards clipping it down gives you five you know there's lots of little angles you know Okay, the main body is made up of 60 pound grease weasel. Um, I, I prefer the grey. Again, you get all different colours, grey or clear, generally. These hooks are Camasan B940s. I always have to play with them, like I think I've showed you before. They're straight when they come to you. I push them in a bit and I offset them. And I think you should always offset your hooks. So I think it gives you much more hooking power. It makes that size two hook into a four so if a small dab comes along you're liable to get it you've still got the strength for the hook where sometimes you'll go down to a four and the hook in strong enough you'll catch a cod and it'll straighten out so I, I believe in using a hook one size bigger closing it in a bit offsetting it and it's just all personal preference well, I've had a lot of success with that so it's everyone to their own really you know when you match fishing Graham it, inevitably different days different types of things one day it'll be all rap lug and they'll be devastating and on the next day if you haven't got any of these live lug you might struggle but basically they all work the fish love them and that's the end of it really the other strange thing Graham about Eastbourne is um, these lug worm they just catch anything um, I think it was about a month ago, I was fishing in a nomads comp and uh, had four dogfish. And dogfish eat mackerel, end of. They love them, you know that, in the boat and everything. But in Eastbourne, they'll eat lugworm and they like them. And, and it's just really weird, you know. Everywhere else you go, you've got to have specialist baits. But in Eastbourne, there's so many lug here, I think, that you can dig, that I think it's saturated with them. So I think the fish come in, they're hungry, they, they get into these lugworm. Four years ago, you used to have these mud rags to catch flounders and white rag. You wouldn't catch them otherwise. Now you catch them on lugworm. Okay, Graham, we're struggling a bit today and I've found I've caught three or four dabs, very small. So I might have to scale down to size four hooks for these dabs, other than miss them. But I've got a little secret up the sleeve for the old dabs. I don't like the fresh outs for dabs. I tend to use these. I don't think you can get a picture of that bait, but it's beautiful. Very small bait. Sometimes you go in the shop and buy them. You might take them back and get the ump saying they're too small, but they are the perfect flatfish bait. Just just like a little one hooker, you know? Just break that towel and that's such a little bait. And sometimes people put too big a bait on the hooks, you know? Just a nice compact bait's what all you want. Yeah, Graham, I caught these this morning in about an hour and a half um, down near Langley Point. And, uh, there's a nice flounder here. 
Uh, I've got another flounder in here, a smaller one as well. But uh, terrific fishing, that's what it's like here. The difference between the place and the flounder, I don't know if you can notice, but the flounder's more, the place is more rounder and he's got the orange spots, that's the big di difference. And a lot of people don't know the difference between a dab and a flounder. I haven't got a dab here, but if you ever run your finger out the back of a flounder, it'll be, it'll be sort of um, smooth. If you get a dab, because sometimes they look quite similar, and you run your fingers along the back of a dab, it's very coarse like sandpaper. And that's a huge difference, because I've had guys quite often say to me, is this a flounder or a dab? And I go, straight away, run my finger along it, it's like sand, yes, yeah, a dab, mate. Okay, fine, you know. But it's very, they're very similar sometimes, it's almost like they're crossbred. But these big orange spots are the place, identify the place, as you can see. And they're also rounder, and the bigger they get, they're like dustbins in the end. Of a, more of a diamond shape, the flounder. Also, the, this ridge along the back is quite coarse, whereas on the on the place it's smooth as well. That's another distinctive marking. That that will feel rough most of the time on a flounder. So if you do want to target dabs, get yourself some of these lovely little black lug, beautiful ones, and just pop that on there. It's a lovely, beautiful, compact little bait. That's all you want. Them fresh outs, they're really good, them ones that are dug this morning, but sometimes these, especially these can be brilliant when they're three days old as well, because the dabs seem to like the old lug. So what I'm gonna do now is disband them ones, the fresh outs, put three of these little ones on, see if we can hook up a nice little couple of dabs. Yeah, I just caught a dab, Graham. Um, unfortunately, he's not sizable, and you can't take this home. See, it's on 19 centimetres. He's gotta be 20. So he's not big enough. So what we do, it's got to be returned nice and neatly. Don't throw it up in the air like some people do. Put it back nice and sweetly and he'll live. And there's a lot of matches in England now that are catch and release, which is really good in a way because we had a flatfish match last week and I was fortunate enough to win it down at Cambridge Road. And I had four, four um, plays. But basically, they all went back and you look, you look about an hour later and you think, you know, is he going to... Because sometimes the hooks are quite deep. Is he basically going to float up on the top? No, they go back, they live, which is really nice, you know. And catch and release matches are becoming more and more popular. Certainly, I don't really like them, but from conservationist wise, they're brilliant, you know. But it's very, you have to be fast. At night, it's a bit awkward. During the day, they're, they're good, good matches, you know. Yeah, Graham, here's a good tip. When you're fishing with a fixed ball, get yourself a finger stall, about £4.50, maybe a fiver. Just place your finger on there before you put your bail arm over. Of course, it stops any hassle, stops your fingers getting cut. Brilliant, gives you a bit of confidence. Well, we got quite a few tips there from Tony on catching flatfish, and indeed in that match, he caught a lot of small flatfish, nothing big at all. Uh, place, dabs and flounder, but I'm due to go back, but with a three hour drive down here, and I'm facing a three hour drive back, I'm in no real rush to get into the traffic. I've come back to Eastbourne itself, to a beach where Tony did a bit of test fishing this morning, called Cambridge Road. Never fished it before in my life, so I don't know it, but I've got some rods out, got some bait in the water after about eight hours of watching other people fish, which is never good. Just up there is the Eastbourne Pier, absolutely flat calm, some other guys fishing up there as well. I've got the rigs out, I've got the baits in the water. Do you know what? It's just a headfish. Well, it's good to know I've been here seven minutes. I've got all my rods out, and I'm, I'm not kidding, I've got rattling bites already. I don't think they're flatfish, I don't think they're placed, I've got a feeling they might be the whiting and the pouting that we saw further up the coast. 
but it's still, you know what I mean, at this stage of the day, I've got two hours fishing, it's still nice to see that rod top rattling. But what I do like to do is, first cast like this, I've got three hooks, I've got fresh, what they call the fresh outs that Tony talked about, the uh, freshly dug lug worm on the bottom hook, and then I snapped in half the papered ones, the ones in the paper, which are much tougher and a smaller bait. I've got a little spinning rod on the inside, just in case those blackfish were on, you know, close by. But I'd like to give it about 15 minutes for that first cast. So even though I've got bites here, the fish is either hooked or it's not, I don't want to bring it in too quick, so I haven't exactly got a lot of bait there. So who knows, I might get lucky. In a minute, I'm going to wheel them in. Well, there's a fish on here of some description. It just feels heavy. I hope I haven't cast too far to the left over the groin. Because the tide's ebbing, so it's going to the right. There's definitely a fish on here. Don't know what it is. Oh, that's braid. I actually get a kick out of it. Well, I don't get a kick out of the braid. I get a kick out of the fish. I'd be very surprised, actually, feeding this judder if it's not a flatfish. Come on, baby, let's get lucky. We did all that filming of Tony. It must be a little bit of fame less for me. Come on, that's pulling heavy. That's pulling heavy. Oh, it's only a flatty. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, please. Tony, eat your heart out. We could have won the match, chum. <laughs> that is, I'm not kidding you. Quarter, that's 11 minutes. I've wound it in 11 minutes. I've got here. Look, I've got a nice place here. Oh, Tony's going to go mad. Oh, my God. I've got the thumper. I've got a beauty of a place there. A double on place. It's got to be totally awesome. In fairness, Tony told me Cambridge Road was the place. What a beauty. A nice double. I'm not going to keep them, I'm going to get them both back. Oh no, bites on the other rods, guys. Oh dear. It shows you Tony's tips work. Brilliant. Close in. Look at it. I mean, man alive. Second cast. Spinning rod. Check this one out. Why would you have a match down that other beach where there was such tiny ones when Tony knew all the big ones are up here? Well, this match, of course, he didn't organise it. That seemed kind of a bit daft, doesn't it? Where you're having a match where the fish aren't. Me? I forgot I won the match by now. I've only had two casts. Look at the size of these fish. I'm getting bites almost as soon as you're getting out there. Oh, they're definitely on the feed. Because this one doesn't need unhooking, it needs brain surgery. And this one, by the way, is a really nice flounder. That's two place on the first cast, with the big one long way out. Nice flounder on the first cast with this spinning rod close in. They must be on the bite. Do you know what? I may not have many worms, but I'm down to half worms. I still feel I'm in with a shell. Yes, folks, it's me again with yet another fine place. I mean, what a mark Tony's put me on. The Cambridge Road place mark. Man alive, the rig works, the fish are on the bite. It's flat calm, the seagulls are making a racket, thankfully probably eating somebody else's chips. I'll get this one unhooked, and I think I'm still gonna push on. Great fishing. I'll get some really good action now. I've got it on the on the spinning rod. It's a fish. I'm assuming it's another flatfish. And this one's only 40, 50 yards out. Digging like a flatfish. I just hope it doesn't come off close in. 
And that's something that happens with uh, a lot of flappies, they're digging close here when they come off. Maybe I've lost this one, maybe I've called it too soon. That's what you get, You're being cocky, but a hell of a bite. I'm back. Oh, man. That man Tony certainly puts you on the mark, doesn't he? This one is a nice flounder. And you can tell up here, as you were saying earlier on, very rough up the centre lateral line here. Not the whole skin, that's smooth, unlike the dab. And round the edges here is rough. There's a line round the edge, but the lateral line is the telltale mark here, right up in the back of the head there. Well, you can see that there. That is rough. A nice flounder, a nice Eastbourne flounder. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hope you got some tips there. I certainly did about that wave. The fiddle that worm on the hook. I'm going to get this chap back, and of course, I'm now going home. Not. I don't know what to say, folks. I still haven't gone home yet. It's shocking, isn't it, really? Well, what can I say? Yeah, again, thanks for watching the totally awesome flat fishing show.